Welcome into Bear Bets. It is just me today, Jeff Schwartz. The bear is out. He had surgery on Friday. He is recovering. We hope to have him back next week. He sends his best wishes and sends uh, no wagers today. So what we're going to do today for the show is we're going to have a long gambling group chat as usual. It's going to be me and Sammy P and Will Hill. I'll give you my best bet after the show. We'll touch on a little bit of Survivor. Next week, we'll have the bear back. He'll be back, not full strength, but back enough to be on the show with us. Uh, we, we do miss him. We wish him well. Hope he enjoys this show. Hope you guys enjoy this show. And let's get right to it, guys. Gambling Group Chat. We talk everything NFL for week 16. We cover MVP odds, the games, the playoffs, the playoff odds, everything you need to know about this week. We touch on bowl games as well because there are all bowl games this week. And we have a little fun at the end with a, a fun NFL tweet we saw this week. So here it is. It's me, Sammy P, and Will Hill, the Gambling Group Chat. Gambling group chat, it's me, Sammy P, Will Hill, guys. Uh, no bear, obviously. I, I feel like our, our handsome rating just went up a bunch. So j- just for one episode, though. But I didn't know you had to talk with your shoulder. I know bear had shoulder surgery, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to miss him. We're going to have, it's probably a quicker show, less discussion of Arby's, less discussion of soccer, but we wish him well. Hope he's getting better. I think he's starting to come out of it a little bit, and, and the worst is behind him. So definitely, definitely missing the bear right now. I've got the bear minus one ten each way, face down in the applesauce. Minus one ten each way. <laughs> He's just, just knocked out as he recovers from his surgery. Uh, all right, guys. Um, the NFL playoffs are coming down to the stretch here. We have seven NFC teams between seven and seven and six and eight. Eight AFC teams between uh, eight and six and six and eight. So a lot of teams still alive in the playoff hunt. The Buffalo Bills beat the Cowboys last weekend. They're the nine seed right now. They're minus about 200 to make the playoffs. Are, are you guys surprised that, that a nine seed uh, can have sort of the yes be at minus 200 and really, and we talked about Sammy now for weeks, their odds to win the Super Bowl, their odds to, to, to win the AFC are so high considering they're not even a playoff team right now. Well, let's give Will credit. I mean, he was talking about this, I think three weeks ago before the Kansas City game when Buffalo was as high as 50 to one to win the Super Bowl and 22 to one to win the AFC. And he was like, hey guys, you could hit the bills right now. And we didn't believe it. We didn't think it was a thing until they beat Kansas City. And then the conversation starts to change. But I think all of us collectively were on the Buffalo side last week against Dallas. That was a horrible spot for Dallas. But You think about that number now, and I'm not going to lay $2, but assuming they beat Easton Stick and Bailey Zappi well, that minus 200 goes to minus 500. So it could still be relatively cheap. I still don't want to jump on the playoff track. I've got AFC. I've got Super Bowl. Not as uh, good numbers as you have, but, I mean, this team clearly, and, and the books have said this to me too, if Buffalo and KC get in and play on a neutral, not that that would ever happen because somebody's got to have home field, But Buffalo and Kansas City are about as numerically equal as possible uh, from a power rating standpoint. Yeah, we were just talking uh, before the show started. This Bills team reminds me a little bit, if people remember, the Packers team in 2010, where a lot of people picked them. They were a lot of people's Super Bowl pick before the season, but then they were struggling. They were right around 500. They had to win their last two or three games to get in the playoffs. Um, And and if you remember, the Bears played the Packers the final week of the season. The Bears were locked into the two seed. They had nothing to play for. And usually you rest your guys, you get ready for the playoffs. They had a bye back when there were two byes. The Bears played all of their guys. And somebody asked Lovey Smith, who was the coach, he's like, well, hey, we don't want the Packers anywhere near the playoffs, which was interesting because the Bears and the Packers were on opposite sides of the bracket. They couldn't even play until the NFC title game at earliest. And guess what happened? They played the NFC title game. The Packers won. The (laughs) Packers obviously got in the playoffs and they were favored in every single game the Packers were even though they were the sixth seed when there were only six teams that made the playoffs on the road, the first three games favored in all of them favored in the Super Bowl and won the thing and won the whole thing. Now I'm not saying Buffalo is going to do that, but there is that sort of vibe where, Hey, if they get in, they're going to be favored in a lot of these games. You're just look, you got Allen, you've established a running game. Now you got some pieces on defense, the AFC, there's not that great dominant team. So, I mean, I don't know that there's any value now. I certainly wouldn't be laying 12 or 13 with them. This is a, if you believe in spots this week, man, the chargers were just completely humiliated a week ago and the bills just got through a season saving win against the chiefs another season saving win a big win against the cowboys this is uh, such a letdown spot i wouldn't be laying the points here but it, it's all set up for the bills going forward no no easton stick plus 12 and a half not gonna lay not gonna do that 
I would take it before I laid it. I mean, if there's ever a chance, if there's ever a week where you're like, hey, you were, you guys were completely embarrassed. And Jeff, I don't know if you ever played in a game where you were embarrassed like that, where you gave up 60 something points. I mean, no. quit is a big word. Quit is not a word. Look, look, they're pro athletes. It's football. You can't go out there and just, you know, go through the motions. You'll get hurt. You'll get seriously hurt. But that was about as embarrassing as you can have as a performance. You get some extra time to, you know, uh, rest, reflect on that game. You have a new coach. You got to figure you at least get a good effort this week. I want to, I don't want to misquote Stucky's tweet, but I did see he put something out where a team loses by 30 plus and then they're getting double digits the next week. It's something like 17 and three ATS. Wow. So it's, it's very tough. I, I understand that people watching this are like, I'm not taking the Chargers. They suck. Well, I mean, this line a week ago, when Buffalo was what a two point favorite against Dallas and you know, the chargers hadn't lost by a million points. This look ahead number was nine. I mean, it was, so now you get through the 10. I know the wise guys hit super, uh, super book and South point. They took 13 and a half. They took 13 South points down to 11 right now on this game. The public's going to take Buffalo because the public is not going to take the chargers after the chargers got just destroyed on Thursday night, but I agree. I mean, you take the points or else for me, at least. So the rest of the AFC conference looks like this, right at the top Ravens, Dolphins, Chiefs will clinch with a win over the Raiders this weekend. And then it's Jacksonville tied in the AFC South right now. They're the four seed with the tiebreakers, Browns, Bengals, Colts. That's the playoffs right now. Texans, Bills, Broncos. Is there a team guys? I'll start with you. Will that, you like to maybe sneak up in there that's currently not a playoff team outside of Buffalo. We we like Buffalo there, but is is there something for the the Steelers? Are they going to get back to it, into it? Are the Bengals going to get back into it? Are the Broncos going to be a playoff team? I, I I guess I would pick the Broncos just because you know you get the Patriots this week and get back on track. I don't know that any of these teams are that dangerous. I think there's a reason people want Buffalo out of the mix because you know you look at these teams: the Raiders, the Colts, uh, the you know the Texans with Stroud beat up and their defense. I don't know that there's a sleeper in here. I, I don't know, Sammy. Do you feel differently? I actually want a short Indianapolis. Me I know too. that wasn't the question you asked for a team to get in. I, I, I'm looking at teams that I want to sort of push out. Indianapolis has been getting by and Shane Steichen, let, let's start there. He's done an outstanding job given the pieces he's had to work with backup quarterback, backup running backs, all that jazz. They've been very, very good to this point. I think they lose to Atlanta this week. Atlanta's getting steamed. The wise guys are all over Atlanta. And I know that's a different conversation for a different day, but Indianapolis has to beat Atlanta. And then they probably got to beat CJ Stroud on January 7th. And I, Assuming Stroud plays, it doesn't sound good for this week. Stroud's going to beat Indy in the final week of the season. So I got two more losses for the Colts coming. That puts them at like nine and eight. And I think that's not enough to get in. So I'm looking at Colts to miss, actually. That's probably the position I would make right now. So Colts are no at plus 110. As we mentioned, Browns are yes, minus 800. Bills, uh, yes, minus 210. Sammy, back to that Falcons-Colts game. I, I like the Falcons as well in this game. Tyler Heineke starting uh, for them. How do you advise people to wager on this game considering the trajectory of, of the Falcons after that Panthers loss? I mean, it's an ugly side, obviously, but I think it's the right side in this game. Yeah, it's tough to get back to the Falcons. Like, I, I know people <laughs> that were on Atlanta last week that will just never bet them this week. And I, and I understand it. You know, if you, you bet a team that loses... What was the final nine to seven uh, against a one yes. loss team? It, it's tough to drink that milkshake again the following week. I did not bet Atlanta last week. So I've, I've uh, been able to kind of look at this with a clearer lens, you know, Atlanta at home should be probably two, two and a half. So the fact that it's Atlanta minus one to me, look, I mean, a lot of people are going to bet teams. I'm betting numbers. I'm, I'm laying one. Actually, I took one with Atlanta and I, I might come back into the pond and get a little bit more minus one. I know they're a maddening football team, but they are so erratic, Will, and this might not be what people want to hear. They are so erratic that they could win or lose any coin flip, period. I mean, they could win this game, they could lose this game, but really I think the number should be two, two and a half. So even at minus one, when they were a small dog, now they're a small favorite. I think this is the time to bet Atlanta at least this week. Not Maybe not big picture, make playoffs, win division, but Atlanta feels cheap at home minus one. Yeah, I'm with you. I like Atlanta this week. And I like Heineke. Look, he, I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, he's not. But I have not understood this 
commitment, this loyalty to Ritter. Like this kid wasn't a first round pick. He took a flyer in sort of the middle of the draft. It hasn't worked out. He turns the ball over like crazy. Again, Heineke's not the solution long term, but uh, I thought, and they gave him a chance earlier, uh, you know, a month or so ago. He got hurt and then he went back to Ritter. I, I thought this should have been Ritter, uh, uh, Heineke's team. Heineke, again, he's not miles better, but to me, he's he's an upgrade over, over Ritter. Heineke is. So uh, I agree with you. I like Atlanta here. If you want to throw the Colts in a teaser, I get it at that two, two and a half. You figure this is a close game. Atlanta plays nothing but really close games, one and two point games. It's always right around the number. So, you know, those points are extra valuable. I I agree. I think Atlanta wins this one. They could probably, you know, it's wild too. I know it's not going to happen, Jeff. You might love this though. What if Atlanta just went freaking wildcat? You know, like let's just, we'll take the quarterback out of the equation and we're just going to use Bajan Robinson and Patterson. And then we'll bring in Heineke occasionally I mean, I'm sure the offensive line would love that. We're just going to maul you to death with Bajan and company. But I, I don't know, man. This Arthur Smith thing is is frustrating as all hell because I, I do need them. I've got over eight on the season wins. Don't feel great about that with all the close losses. I mean, look at five of their last seven games. They've lost by one score, which is just – it's so tough to swallow. But the coaching has been horrible, especially inside the red zone. Everyone loved them in the summer, well, too. They, they were everybody's use, little darling in the summer. They don't use the players they drafted. You spent a, yep. fr- a top 10 pick on Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and Bijan Robinson. So, look, the Wildcats are a great idea. Their offensive line can, can run block, but they don't ever use their guys. That's why Arthur Smith is going to be fired in this season. I know the Arthur Blank gave him the whole, yo, oh, the vote of confidence. The vote of confidence, every time owner says that, mark my words, you guys know this, Every time an owner says, vote of confidence, oh, they're my guy, they get fired immediately. He's, he might not be fired now, now. But he'll be fired at the end of the season. They'll, they'll let someone else build up that quarterback room. Uh, NFC South, guys, you mentioned the Falcons. Bucks 7-7, seven and seven, Saints 7-7, seven and seven, Falcons 6-8. and eight. Who's the team, Sammy, that you're most comfortable with winning that division? Who cares? I mean, they're just a sacrificial <laughs> lamb. Whatever they, I mean, and that's the reality. Let's say that like Dallas, say Dallas gets the five and Dallas goes into New Orleans or Tampa Bay. Dallas is a, what, a five and a half, six point favorite, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a conversation to have. I haven't done the math on it, but it's not three and it's not four because the wise guys are going to lay Dallas three on the highway all day. And then twice on Sunday. So I, I, I'm really impressed with the defensive line play of Tampa Bay. And not easy to go into Lambeau Field like Baker Mayfield did and play almost a perfect football game. So Tampa has been better as of late. I don't think it matters who wins the division. I guess to answer your question, I'll say Tampa. It's a, it's a cop-out. Uh, they're playing the best football right now. But literally any of these teams could win it and then lose to Dallas or Philly. Yeah, I think we're looking at a scenario. Remember last year in the playoffs, that Monday night playoff game, Dallas went into Tampa. And I feel like Tampa was a, a popular sort of trendy pick because they still had Tom Brady, obviously. Uh, and Dallas just destroyed them. So I think we'll probably see a similar scenario this year. Um, I, I would think it's probably around. Could you make it a touchdown? Now, I, I think if you you made a, a playoff team, you know, a playoff game where the, the home team's getting seven, that would probably get gobbled up pretty quickly, but I think it's in that six, seven range. If it's Dallas at Tampa, Dallas at New Orleans, somewhere between maybe somewhere in that dead zone over a field goal under a touchdown, something like that. But I guess it would be Tampa. Give Baker credit. He bounced around the league. Remember last year, he's on the Panthers. He's on the Rams on that weird Thursday night game. He's, he's at least, you know, extended his career in a, in a league where there's no quarterbacks. He's played well. And you, know, you could go back and say, Hey, he, he was, the, the future of Cleveland, he got hurt. He played through it, and then the bloom was off the rose with him. And give him credit. He's at least extended his career here. But, again, this is not – whoever wins this, whether it's the Saints, who nobody needs to see in the playoffs, or the Bucks, this is not a team that's going to make a run. <laughs> the, Sa- the Saints are like the Falcons. I mean, this whole division, right, they're just hard to watch. Like, this, when you watch the Saints play, it's never fun to watch them play. Never watch them and think, oh, man, this is – a fun offense, a fun defense. Every game is an absolute grind for them. Uh, and it's just, I, I hope they're on the playoffs either. The NFC playoffs right now, we know Niners, Cowboys, Eagles are in. Lions will be in if they win this weekend, but they're get, probably going to be in. I mean, I don't know how they're going to be out. We're talking about the Bucks. The sixth seed is the Vikings. The seventh seed is the Rams. Then Seattle, then New Orleans, then Atlanta, then Green Bay. Do you guys see this ending? I'll start with you, Sammy. Ending in that order? Or do the Seahawks or Saints get up, you know, back up to, to the sixth or seventh seed? 
I was actually just talking about this on a show yesterday, the Rams to make the playoffs. And it's it's funny how we feel about these teams two weeks ago and how we feel about them now. But you look at that seven seed right now. The Rams have the seven, right? It's seven and seven. Seattle's the eight. New Orleans is the nine. However, the Saints are probably going to lose tonight, which I know we'll talk about later. Saints are a four-point dog. And the Rams beat the Seahawks twice. So in terms of tiebreakers, if the Rams win tonight, they have the tiebreaker over Seattle and over New Orleans. Yet, when we look at the money line for Thursday night, Rams are minus 210, minus 220. Rams will make the playoffs, minus 120. Which, as we know, Will, if the Rams win tonight as a four-point favorite, 120 becomes 190 or higher. So I, I think... That's a long way around of me saying I think the Rams to make the playoffs right now is not a bad bet at minus 120. If they lose, the calculus gets a lot different. But assuming they can beat Derek Carr at home as a four-point favorite, the 120 goes a lot higher, and then they have the tiebreakers over Seattle and New Orleans, and they probably get it. Yeah, you go back to that ridiculous game. It was a month ago or so where it, it was Rams Seahawks and the Seahawks blew a big lead. Remember, they settled for like a 57 yard field goal, missed it. Now the Rams have the tiebreaker over the Seahawks. That could bite the Seahawks, but I like the position the Seahawks are in. If you just look at the schedule, Titans, uh, home for the Steelers, then the Cardinals, they could get two. They might even be able to get three. I thought that was a season saving win the other night against the Eagles to pull that game out of the fire. So we're probably looking at two out of three. I think the Packers are dead. Probably two out of the three. Uh, Seahawks, Rams, Vikings. One of them gets left out. Vikings get the Lions twice, so I wouldn't be shocked if it's them. I, I don't know that anything is completely mispriced. I, I, you know, Rams at, at basically a coin flip, uh, probably a good bet. They play the, the 49ers the last week, but other than that, they, they have a winnable game tonight. So I, I don't know that anything is worth a bet. There, Look, if, if you listen to the show, I mean, I think Bear talked about it. Jeff talked about it. There were some fat prices on the Rams, plus 490, plus 500 oh, to yeah. make the playoffs. Not that long ago, right around Thanksgiving. So if you got those in pocket, you can, you can earn off those. Um, I, but more or less, I agree with Sammy that the Rams minus 125. If you think they're going to win tonight, and I do think they're going to win tonight, I don't like them to cover. I would take the points tonight. I, I, I would take the Rams probably. Would you guys put money on anyone but the Niners to win the NFC right now? Is there is there a price you guys like for any of these teams? The Eagles, is there a time to buy the Eagles right now off a three-game losing streak? Will, anyone you take besides 49ers? I I I don't see the 49ers not in the Super Bowl. I I think they're going. I think there's on, there's some pressure on them to go. I mean, Shanahan's they've never won a Super Bowl. If they make the NFC title game this year, which look, they're going to be the one with Seattle losing, uh, with uh, Philly losing and Dallas losing. Uh, San Fran, as long as they win two out of three, they're going to be the one, which means they get the, the week off, a home game. You win that, you're in the NFC title game. So they're going to be in that NFC title game. They're going to be favored. There's some pressure on Shanahan now. This would be his fourth NFC title game, I think, in the last five years. He's made a Super Bowl, had a 10-point lead with the ball in the fourth quarter against the Chiefs. Uh, I think they're clearly the best team, and, and I think there's some pressure on Shanahan to not just get to the Super Bowl to win one because, you know, if they somehow don't make it or don't win it, they're, you're going to start to ask some questions about Shanahan. Can, like, as good as his team is, as good as his offense is, like, at some point he's got to win one. So, to me, they're clearly the better team. Again, I wouldn't lay the points with them this week. I watched them a lot against Arizona last week. Arizona moved the ball up and down the field, 430 plus yards of offense, yeah. 22 first downs, over six yards per play. I think over eight yards per carry on the ground. So there are some flaws on the defense, which is a little banged up. But to me, the 49ers, uh, they'll get the bye, they'll get healthy. And I think the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl. They've got two guys on offense that could win the MVP. That's Amazing. the reality <laughs> of the situation. Yeah, the defense has been spotty, but I mean, Purdy could win MVP, McCaffrey could win MVP. Shanahan should be the coach of the year for making this whole Purdy thing work. I mean, they are just an offensive juggernaut right now. And really, I know it's it's funny because of all oh, the Bear Bats guys like the Niners. Yeah, well, yeah, of course we do because they're the highest power rated <laughs> team in football. Uh, clip this off, social team. Oh, we love the Niners. Um, but it's it's a path <laughs> to the number one seed. And, and here's their schedule. They got the Ravens as, at home as a five and a half point favorite. Then they play the Washington football team, formerly known as the football team. And then they play the Rams at home. And they're going to win all three of those games, likely, assuming everybody's healthy. In the playoffs, I mean, they are a seven-point favorite, maybe, at home against Dallas. I mean, that's where we're at. I mean, I've got Niners 112 and Cowboys 107. That's on a neutral. That's a five-point gap. You give the Niners 
point and a half, two points for home field. We're at seven. So even the other good teams in the NFC are going to be catching near a touchdown if they go into San Francisco. And we're talking about how about a team like the Lions? That line could be eight. Uh, if they face the Rams in the playoffs, we're talking 12, maybe. I mean, th- th- they're a five and a half point favorite against Baltimore. Baltimore is going to be the one seed in the AFC. That's how good the Niners are, and that's how respected they are by the odds makers. I'm still confused about the coach of the year odds. Shanahan is is plus eight fifty right now. He has the fifth longest odds or, or fifth shortest odds. I, I I should say. I mean, if you have two offensive MVP favorites and Brock Purdy, who's the the clear favorite now, but also McCaffrey, you're the one seed. You're the best team in the NFL by far. How is he not coach of the year? I understand that we want to give it to sort of the best story of the year, but my man has Brock Purdy is 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 the last pick of the draft as the as the best quarterback in the NFL. He's playing the best. His numbers are out. Like it's time to, to to sort of just say what it is. Brock Purdy's playing outstanding. His numbers are great. His team is great. He's yes, he has good weapons. He has good coaching. All those things are true. But he's executing the offense. They're moving the ball. His numbers thrown down the field are are, are are fantastic. Sammy, why is Shanahan not the favorite for coach of the year? Oh, because Dan Campbell's a better coach, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I can't even say it. I can't That's even simple, say it with right? a straight face. He's the favorite still. How is he the favorite? He hasn't coached a good game since Thanksgiving. Okay, they beat Denver. All right, all right, fine. We'll give him that one. But I just, I agree with you. I think the knock is, and well, you could correct me if I'm wrong here. I think the knock is that San Francisco's Super Bowl good. And coaches that have teams that are good enough to win the Super Bowl sort of get looked over for coach of the year. I mean, the win total was 10 and a half. So they were supposed to be one of the best teams in football, if not the best team in football. I I agree with you, though. If they go 14-3 and with a quarterback who hurt his elbow last year in the playoffs, they run it back with the same quarterback because they believed in him, and he takes them to 14-3 and in a one seed in the NFC, he should get more love than Dan Campbell and Shane Steichen and D'Amico Ryans. But the narrative with this award, and you could go back the last 10, 15 years, It's usually a coach who took a bad team and made them a good team or worked with adversity or both. And that's why I think you look at Indianapolis, not a playoff team last year, backup quarterback, backup running backs. They are doing it with a lot of pieces that weren't supposed to be contributors. And that's that's what Brian Dable did last year. That's what these coach of the year awards usually come down to. Bad team becomes good team or the adversity or both. Yeah, I like I like the Shanahan at plus eight fifty. I think that's a good number. In, in no world should Campbell be plus two fifty, and Shanahan should be plus eight fifty. Uh, I will say, if Ryan's gets in, he'll be tough to beat because of that narrative, especially now doing it with a backup quarterback for a few games. But look, they're an underdog this week. If Stroud isn't back next week, I mean, they could quickly be on the outside looking in here of the playoffs. Uh, I will say though, just a quick reminder: last year, Sirianni for Coach of the Year was a wire to wire massive favorite. And not only did he not win, he didn't even finish in the top three. So, this idea that these odds are completely reflective of what the voters are thinking, these odds are just a, a guesstimate in terms of like what how they think the, the voting is going to go. But it's very hard to ha- look. It's hard to handicap football games. It's even harder to handicap how vote how, how human beings are thinking and how they're going to vote. So, these odds are not always reflective. These are just more of a guess. Baltimore, San Francisco, the final game of, of the week on Monday night. The line right now is five, the Niners favorite by five. If if the Ravens win, guys, does Lamar Jackson for MVP move massively? Is this game an elimination game for one of these two guys at the top, Will? I think it, it would depend what the score is. If it's close, is it high scoring? I do think if Baltimore wins, Purdy and Lamar are probably even out to where they're you know, co-favorites. One is plus 150. The other is two to one, something like that. I will say, if you listen to the show all year and you you listen to us at Purdy, when we talked about it week three at 22 to one, if you have Purdy at some fat prices, I don't hate the idea of taking Baltimore plus five, five, plus five and a half uh, as a hedge. 
because first of all, you could win both 49ers win by a field goal. You win your Baltimore bet and you're sitting there with Purdy who pretty much, I think locks up the MVP. If they win this game, I don't buy the idea that McCaffrey's going to win it. So that's a nice hedge. Um, in, in, in like you, you said, if Lamar, uh, in Baltimore, win this game, it's obviously going to even out a bit. So I don't know. I, I do like Baltimore plus the points, just, you know, even if you had nothing in pocket, I do think this will be a closer game. I, I didn't like what I saw. Like I mentioned with the 49ers defense last week, Harbaugh is good as a dog. The Ravens are always good against these NFC teams because you don't see Lamar often. It's kind of an oddball offense. It's hard to get, you know, a grasp on Lamar, taking the proper angles in terms of tackling him, getting used to his speed. So I think this will be a close game, a field goal game. You get a good quarterback in Lamar, a good coach in Harbaugh, a good kicker with Tucker in a close game. So I could see this being, you know, a 27, 24 type of game. I actually like the over two uh, for all the reasons I mentioned with the 49ers defense and look 49ers are going to get their 28, 30 points against pretty much every, anybody. So uh, to me, it would be Ravens. And I, I do like the over as well. Let me start by saying, I love our fans and our audience, but stop Uh-oh. tweeting at videos from six days ago. I mean, I'm still getting replies <laughs> from the, the Brock Purdy, Dak Prescott MVP clip that we put up last Saturday and people are still tweeting at it like, you guys are a bunch of idiots. Dak sucks. And it's like, all right, first of all, he doesn't suck. Second of all, the clip was posted before the Cowboys and Bills played. Like, come on, stop tweeting at old clips. Um, that's a long way of me saying, I feel like, man, I feel like Lamar MVP is a better bet. Like, if, if you were going to line up two bets for me, like, all right, I have one thing here and one thing here. And one of them is Ravens money line. The other is Lamar MVP. I think I'd take Lamar MVP at five to one before I would take Ravens two to one to win the game. Because if Baltimore wins and then we look back at the end of the season and Lamar has what almost 4,000 passing yards and maybe he's got a thousand rushing yards. I know the touchdown number might not be as high as other guys, but if a player has 5,000 yards of offense all around for a number one seed, he should get a lot of love. That said, I had Tyreek Hill at a very good number. I'm a little deflated with my uh, MVP thoughts right now because barring an ankle injury, he was going to be one of the guys in that conversation for real. So I'm I'm still so jaded by that. I feel for the guy. He was playing MVP level football. But yeah, Lamar is going to certainly make a move if the Ravens beat the Niners outright. Cowboys go to the Dolphins this weekend. Dolphins favored by about a point and a half. Guys, I, I, maybe I'm a sucker, but I like the Cowboys this weekend in this game because when you get physically dominated in a game, typically the next weekend, you play much better, right? I mean, there's two ways to lose. Typically, you, you lose, you just, you're, the team's better than you. That, that happens. Like, that's, you don't accept losses, but you understand mentally that that's the case sometimes. I've been on those teams where, hey, they're better than us. We tried our best. They tried their best. They beat us. But Buffalo physically punched Dallas in the mouth. Both sides of the line is coming. Dallas is supposed to be a physical team, right? Physical offensive line, physical defense line, rush the passer, run the football, protect Dak Prescott, and they got they got dominated. And I feel like just the pride of that team is going to go to Miami, and Miami's had trouble this season against teams that try to out-physical them. So, Will, I like the Cowboys to win this game. I mean, I'll take the point and a half, sure, but I, I think Cowboys go to Miami. And, they, look, both teams – have a lot of wins against losing teams. One team, one game, one win, Dallas over Philadelphia. Otherwise, they have no wins against 500 teams or better. But I like the Cowboys to win this game. Yeah, it's interesting. I I like this game more as a fan than I do as a better because I could see either of these teams winning by 10-plus points. I I would lean towards Dallas. First of all, you're getting the point and a half. Um, I think if you can disrupt Miami, throw their timing off, get physical with them, get physical with their receivers, make two, you know, get them off his spot. I think they can be, uh, look, we saw the Titans do it where they can look really mediocre, especially if Hill's not back or if he's not a hundred percent. So I would go with Dallas here. Um, it's interesting. These teams are so similar where uh, they just beat up on bad teams. They struggle when they play somebody in their own, you know, weight class. So it, they're, they're sort of mirror images of each other. It's a fascinating game. It's a fun game. 4:30 Christmas Eve. You know, iconic uniforms. This will be a fun one. I, okay. Dallas is in perfect teaser range. There's plenty of other games, whether it's Texans at two and a half, Colts at one and a half, that you can tease up. I, I think this would probably be a close game, even though I said, look, I could see anything really in this game happening. I'd love to have Dallas plus seven and a half in my pocket. So them as a teaser leg would be the way to go. I would lean towards Dallas winning, but this is not one where, like as great of a game it is, this is not one where like, man, this is a great game to bet. I don't know if you feel feel differently, Sammy. 
I am not touching the side. And again, we all had Buffalo last week. It's not like we're just anti-Dallas people. Dallas was in a bad spot last week. I I don't feel the same way this week. If anything, I feel like the defensive intensity is going to pick up for Dallas. And look, the 51s have all disappeared in terms of the total on this game. And we're at mostly 50 now. And it's funny, before we started taping the show, Will and I were in the chat and I said, you think Tyreek is going to play? Because he didn't practice Wednesday. Obviously, we taped this before uh, the, the, the Thursday practice, so we don't know the answer yet. But right before we started hitting record, one offshore book went to 49 and a half. And this is a book that takes big bets. So clearly, respected play is under. And I think if Tyreek doesn't play, so it's sort of a 50-50 split right now. Maybe it's 60-40 that he doesn't play. And a, a different conversation is how effective is he going to be? But I think this is a game that's probably like 24 to 20 final. I love what Fangio has done. He is He's shifted a lot of things defensively in Miami. We know that Dallas needs to be better defensively and play with more passion up front. All of that said, I think 50 under 50 still is not a bad bet. And if Tyreek doesn't play, this comes even lower, obviously, because then it's easier to double waddle. And without Tyreek Hill, the offense just isn't the same. I know they lit up the Jets last week, but the Jets couldn't move the ball. So Miami was playing with short field after short field after short field. Lean under 50, for sure. Looking at the other games uh, uh, on the slate, so two coaches that are the best in the NFL's underdogs. Mike Tomlin and Mike Vrabel are underdogs this weekend. Pittsburgh hosting Cincinnati, Seattle at Tennessee. Which of the two... Would you take right now? Tennessee, no playoff berth right now. Maybe Ryan Tannehill or the Steelers who are, I've never seen them play worse. I mean, they're just not a good football team right now. Sammy, if you're taking one as a home dog, which which franchise? Not Trubisky, ever. Ever, ever, ever. No way. It's Rudolph this week, I think. <laughs> oh, well, whoa, it's whoa. Rudolph, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, whatever, man. I don't, I'm not betting Pittsburgh. Uh, I know there are going to be some Pittsburgh fans that are not happy about this. Um, Vrabel is just, he's such a good coach, man. And I, it's funny out here, yeah. all the talk is about Belichick or is it going to be Gerard Mayo? And I, if I'm in charge in new England, I'm throwing the bag at Mike Vrabel to come home and, and coach the next era of Patriots football. But I, this guy is a monster, Jeff, you've been talking about Vrabel since I've known you. Yeah. So three, four years now, he is just nails. His team cares. They play hard for him. And look, did, did we not learn when they were down 14 on Monday night football, they scored the touchdown, and what did Vrabel do? He went for two because two. he knew he knew that his team was not prepared to go to overtime. So he goes for two. They get the two. They're down by six. Then they score again, kick the extra point, win the game. Vrabel has embraced the analytics, and Vrabel pushes all the right buttons. That's not to say that Tennessee is a lock because there's – as much as we see the word lock on Twitter, there's no such thing as a lock. I would I would rather bet Vrabel before Tomlin this week. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think I'd go Tennessee first. And, and again, both of those are good teaser legs. Two and a half at home. You just go to eight and a half. And so many of these games are close, low scoring. Those points are valuable. I agree. Vrabel's a good coach. I, I would uh, look I, just to just to you know give a little pushback. They went under their season win total this year. They're going to go under seven and a half. They went under their season win total last year. He hasn't won a playoff game in five years. I agree. Again, I agree he's a good coach, but uh, I think he gets a little too much love for those playoff upsets a couple years ago. I think it's 2019. They beat the Patriots. Edelman dropped the ball. Okay. Then they had a monster upset against the Ravens. The, the, the following years, he, he lost the playoff game at home to the Ravens. He lost, he was one and done against the Bengals. Then they missed the playoffs last year. They blew a huge lead. Then they're missing again. So I don't know. I think he's good, but I do think he's a little bit overrated. He did have Tannehill. Uh, the fighting <laughs> and yeah. Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill might play this weekend. They said again, which is which is insane. I didn't. I actually didn't think he was on the roster still. But no, Tannehill is going to. He might play this weekend. Which I don't know if that changes anything about how you feel about Seattle. There, uh, Lions at the Vikings. This was three and a half, right? Sammy is now three for the Vikings. I like the Vikings in this spot. I feel like you, you, you kind of zig and zag with the Lions here. I know it's indoors, but the Lions are better than than uh, outside, but it's on the road. The Vikings defense is good. I know they blew that game against the Bengals. They should have won that game. Just don't run the same play twice. Like, come on, uh, uh, Kevin O'Connell. Are you in the Vikings here or the Lions? I'm not going to bet this one. Last week I had the over Detroit-Denver. The week before was at the game when they went to Chicago and lost. I was on Chicago. 
Yeah. I don't I don't have an edge here. I, and look, I've looked to bet against Detroit a lot this year. I need more than three, Will. I just do. I, I'd like, you know, I was looking for three and a half, four. Doesn't look like we're going to get there. Um, total's gone up, too, which is a little surprising because Minnesota's been very good defensively. Brian Flores has done an outstanding job this year. Yeah. Think about where the Vikings' defense was last year and where they are this year. It's a pass. I don't. I don't feel like I have any edge, side or total. Yeah, it's a shame because I've never been a Cousins guy. But man, if they had Cousins with those weapons, with that defense, with Flores, I mean, they're still looking up at San Francisco. But there's no reason they couldn't have won a game or two and maybe played the Forty Nineers in the NFC title game, which is crazy to say because they started one and four. But this is a good team. They just don't have a quarterback right now. I have no idea how on earth like. Third and inches, you can't get an inch with those two quarterback sneaks. They went backwards on the last one with Mullins. That was just a typical, just an awful Vikings loss last week. Uh, I guess I would take the points. You guys are telling me all the three and a halfs are gone. The three and a halfs were there. Maybe that was just, you know what? The Sharps got, gobbled it up. That was too many points. I can understand that. Flores is going to blitz the hell out of Goff. We know how Goff is with the blitz. Uh, you are getting Goff on the road, but he is indoors. So, I mean, I, I do think this line is kind of right where I could see Detroit winning for a field, winning by a field goal. If I had to bet the game, I would take the points just because it's Minnesota. Minnesota playing at home with their season on the line. Flores against golf is a good matchup for them. So uh, it would be Vikings or nothing, but again, I, nothing I'm dying to bet here. Any takers for Jets minus three? I, I didn't, oh. Jets being a favorite to me. Is there, is Rogers playing in this game? Like, I don't understand the Jets at all a favorite over anyone right now. Why don't you go first, big guy? Why don't you break this one down? <laughs> if you well, want, I'm just curious why the Jets are a favorite. What do you have? What do you have in the power ranking, Sammy, between Jets and, and Commanders? Uh, let's see. I got Jets at 97, Commanders at 94. So that's that's three on a neutral, oh, but Yikes. you can't make it much higher than three. And I, I don't even know that the Jets even have a home field at this point. So I maybe I'm a little bit low on Washington. Maybe I raise them a point. I mean, either way, I, I make it three on a neutral. So I I'm not betting this. I wouldn't bet this with your money. If somebody texts me on Sunday and says, what do you like? I'm going to delete the number. Yeah. If you're, if you're watching this game without a bet on it, I, I would just, you know, throw, throw something in the eggnog to make it a little more exciting. I mean, just do something else with your life. I mean, Washington jets. I mean, I, I don't know. And under, because how many teams, how many points are these teams going to score? I guess it's going to be how they put Brissett in Brissett actually looked pretty good. I don't know what took them so long to put Brissett in, but not a game I want to bet. Before we get to covering the the tweet of the week, uh, Will, anything else you like in the NFL? I think we covered it. I, I, I think we covered it. I like the Ravens in the over. Uh, Sammy and I are both on Atlanta. Unless I'm missing some games here that I can't think of top of my head. Um, no, I think we I think we covered everything. I can tell you right now. I got a text on Wednesday night from our favorite bartender, and he, yes. I think he's going to end up on the Bears this week. He loves Ooh. the Bears, and this has not been a Bears guy all year. But I, I look, the wind could blow a different direction tomorrow. <laughs> but this is the guy who's really good at being really bad at the NFL. I want to say 19 and 24 this year and 42% the last four years. He was texting me last night. He's like, I, I think Chicago's a really good bet. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> oh no how did Mooney not catch that ball how, how did Mooney not catch that ball sitting in his stomach and that turns into an interception that was an incredible play but we also what, what else have so, we learned so, about Arizona they win games they shouldn't win right. and they're Arizona feisty they keep should, playing Arizona should lose this game Arizona could pick in the top three in the draft and the players don't want to hear that. Obviously, the players are going to try. But the, right. would anybody be surprised if Kyler Murray threw a Hail Mary to beat the Bears? I wouldn't. No. I I wouldn't either. Um, all right, Sammy. Here you go. I know you want to talk about this because we we there's a there's a line set for this. Here's a tweet from Rashard Mendenhall. Okay. So oh. uh, can we please replace the Pro Bowl with an all black versus all white bowl? So these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football. I'm better than your goat. And this was this was an incredible response from, from many people. We have set lineups. Lineups have been set by multiple people around the NFL universe, Sammy. What would what is the line for the the all black versus all white bowl game that Richard Mendenhall has set up for us? 
Oh boy, you gotta be careful here. This is why I make the big bucks, huh? Um, <laughs> Dave Mason is a tremendous offshore bookmaker, and he actually tweeted his line. So I'm gonna just say yeah. what he said. Black guys minus 31 is what he made the number. <laughs> so on the surface, it sounds like a lot of points. Um, but the last white corner that started in the NFL, I believe, was Jason yes. Seahorn. So yes, I mean, it's the problem. It's going to be an issue. And I, I know a lot of guys, I saw Will got Compton's no corner, video. Sammy. Compton's video was hysterical. He goes, well, they, we got that one guy in Iowa. And then I think we got another guy in <laughs> Iowa, uh, which was outstanding. Maybe McCaffrey has to play corner. Who's stopping Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson? That, <laughs> that's the concern. And I think the better question yes. is, what's the total? Because the Whites want to win 10 to 7. Right, I mean, we all know that the whites the whites <laughs> want to win a rock fight. I think the total is a tougher uh, number to make than the line. Sammy covered it perfectly. <laughs> I have absolutely nothing else to add. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Cooper DeGene, the Iowa corner. That's who we we have one. We got one. Sammy McCaffrey over there would be interesting. It was a fun experience. Look, the internet handled this much better than I thought it would. It was a fun. It was fun to go over this, and Will Compton's video was fantastic. I put together a lineup on the radio as well. Uh, so minus thirty-one. The total is what in the fifties or sixties? What do you think? I I have no idea where to even start. Will, can you help me out here? Throw me a bone. It give, have give to a total, be. Will. I, I I mean fifty-four and a half. How about that? Better way. There you go. Awesome. Um, okay, but before we get to Thursday Night Football, because this will be out on, on Thursday, uh, any bowl games for the weekend that you guys have an eye on? We're not doing a college episode this week, so uh, any bowl games? I, I know, Will, you're on Northwestern, I believe, against Utah this weekend. Yep, I took Northwestern. I don't know if the sevens are still out there, but I, I do think they're alive in that game. Boy, it, it's a, a full-time job trying to keep up with these opt-outs. Who opts out? Who opts back in? The transfer portal? Who's playing? Um, I mean, you just you sum it up with Old Dominion, Western Kentucky on Monday, where people laid two with Old Dominion. The line closed at like seven. They're up 20 nothing. You're counting your money before you know what they lose in overtime. So it's not the bowl season we, we're used to having, but um, I'm excited to get to some of these games that mean a little more. There's fewer opt outs. Eventually, you know, the playoff not too far uh, around the corner, but uh, Northwestern getting the points would be one. And uh, the, the game tonight, South Florida getting three. There's some three and a halfs out there. I just think Syracuse, the quarterback op opted out or he had shoulder surgery. Uh, so he's not playing Schrader. Uh, it, it, the Syracuse fired their head coach. South Florida hasn't been to a bowl in five or six years. I think 2018 was the last one. They have a first year head coach. So maybe some motivation there. So I do like South Florida. I like Northwestern. So uh, tread lightly, though. This bowl season is very tricky in terms of betting. It certainly is. I mean, we got the text. In our group thread about Frank Harris not playing the other day for UTSA. What when was that text? At 12 o'clock noon. Yep. And then it comes out 10 minutes before the game or so. The line moved from 11 to 7. And Marshall still got blown out. <laughs> yeah, Marshall and up 14 by... nothing too. They were up 14 nothing. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they lost, I think it was 35-17. So there were some people I know that were so excited. They're holding Marshall plus 11 with a 14 nothing lead and still don't cover, even with the quarterback information. That's the way of the world in 2023. These bowl games are, are so wild. I can tell you what I've heard so far. I know some wise guys that took a lot of 10 on Coastal Carolina. That's 233 yeah. on rotation. Uh, they took 10. That game opened 7. San Jose State got all the way to 10, and uh, some of the 10s are starting to get gobbled up. I personally love the under in Will's game in Utah Northwestern. Um, bet some under 42 last night. There are 41 and a half still available. There's a 40 at the Superbook. So somebody hit them pretty hard uh, on the under there. These are two teams that are very good defensively. These coaches like to play field position. And Utah also has a lot of opt-outs. I want to say like 17, 18 opt-outs right now. Yeah, it's a lot. They're not yeah. going to be the same team, especially on offense. So we don't know what we're going to see from Utah's offense. I'd be surprised, though, if they were going to score 30 points in this game. So I like the under and, and sort of lean with Will. I would take the points as well. That feels like a 17-14, a 20-17 type game. So I do like the under and the uh, that's the Las Vegas Bowl between Utah and Northwestern. Sammy. FCS championship still a few weeks away. 
I believe, but South Dakota State, Montana. You made us money with Montana last week. Do you have an early play in this game? Anything you like? Oh, man, that, that should have never been that close either. I was losing my mind. Did you, the seer, did, did you, I know you guys didn't watch it. I watched every play because I'm a sicko. Montana I some of was, it, yeah. Montana was up 16-9 with three minutes to go. It's fourth and eight. North Dakota State is punting from its own 20. They go for the fake <laughs> punt run. And the punter gets cracked out of bounds. So they convert, add the 15, and then two pass interference penalties to tie the game. I'm over it, clearly. Montana did prevail in overtime. That was a nightmare. I I might be burned out on FCS, man. It's been a a squarely profitable year, just barely. Um, But we got time, though. That game's on January 7th. So give me another week. Yeah. South Dakota State beat Albany 59 nothing in a semifinal game. Yikes. Big number. I think there's like 14. Um, uh, there were 14 available earlier in the week. I, I think the 14s are gone uh, in that game. But like I said, we got we got time to get ready for that one. All right. Let's end with Thursday Night Football. Uh, Rams, Saints. Rams here by four right now. I, I think, Will, you mentioned you don't like the Rams to cover, but you like them to win. Yeah, I would think the Rams would win this game. Just the four bothers me. The Rams have been a nice little feisty underdog team, but now you're putting them in the role as a favorite. I mean, if you look at their wins, they're not overly impressive. They're still not very good on defense. So I could see this being like a 23-20 type of game. So uh, lean towards the Saints plus four. Actually, I'll probably end up betting the Saints plus four. It's funny, one book, I saw it come down. There was a three and a half, and then another book was up to four and a half. So shot Brown, uh, obviously get the best number, but I, I like the Saints here. Yeah, I talked about this a little bit earlier. Obviously, I'm late to the party on Rams playoff stuff because some of us have better numbers. But, I mean, you look at the Rams money line tonight. It's minus 210 around there. And the Rams to make the playoffs is minus 120. So, I mean, you're going to save yourself 90 cents. They win this game. They have the tiebreaker over the Saints, obviously, because they'll play the Saints tonight. And then they beat the Seahawks twice. So as long as the Rams win two of the next three, which is very mathematically likely, I think minus 120 on the Rams, even though you're late to the party, and I'd I'd be late too, but I'd rather bet minus 120 and see what happens on the stretch than lay 210 or lay four tonight with the spread. Sammy, what do we set the number for for Bear being back next week for gambling group chat? Minus 8,000. He's back. Oh, yes, minus 8,000. He's in? I love it. Let's do it. All right, we made it without the bear. Hope he's feeling better. Hope he enjoyed listening to this because I know he will. We'll talk to you guys next week. We'll be covering, again, the bowl games, college football playoff, and, of course, the NFL as usual. Thank you, guys. Always fun gambling group chat. For what it's worth, I would take the over 54 and a half in, in, in the imaginary game. Lots of points scored in that game. Uh, bowl games as well. You guys know I cover the Pac-12 conference. Uh, I think Northwestern wins outright. I know Will has talked about that wager for a long time now. So just something to throw some money line on that game in the Vegas Bowl. Utah's just out. So many guys, uh, they're out for injuries. They're out for opt-outs. They're just sitting out of the game. They're transfer portaling. Um, I, it's just a, a kind of a dead youth squad right now. I never said that about, uh, about a Kyle Whittingham squad, Northwestern. Off a fantastic year, wanting to win this game, so I just go money line on that. The points are great, but well, just just throw, throw a little wager on that this weekend. Uh, we will not do Survivor today because if you're still in Survivor, you don't need my advice. It's that simple. So good luck to you in, in Week 16 if you're still alive. Not a lot of you, so if you are, uh, wish you the best of luck there. Uh, go ahead and uh, and make the best wager you can for the best team in that situation. My best bet for the NFL again. We're not doing College Football Show this week. Is Minnesota. Plus three. I know there was a three and a half earlier in the week, but I'll, I'll take the three here. Hosting the Lions. A couple reasons uh, I like this. Uh, Lions on the road, just not as good. I know this game's inside, so that does favor Jared Goff and what he can do well. But the Vikings defense is extremely underrated. Fifth fifth right now in, in DVOA. I don't think we talk about that enough, what they can do. They're going to pressure Jared Goff. It might be tough, though. I don't think they can cover everyone, but they're going to pressure Jared Goff, try to force him into mistakes. On the other side, guys, uh, look, Nick Mullins was, was okay, especially early in that game uh, uh, against the Bengals, but the, the Vikings' offensive line is really good, and the Vikings can rely on that offensive line against a Lions team that does allow a lot of yards, a lot of points at times. I like the Vikings at home here, plus the three. That's my best bet for the National Football League this week. Also, as I mentioned, I like Northwestern to win outright in that game, but you can take the six and a half. Good spot to be in, and that's it. That's it for our show this week. A little a short show for us, but a long game in group chat. We always love having those guys in. For Bear, who is not here, I am Jeff Schwartz. We'll talk to you guys next week. We'll be back with a college football show to preview you 
the playoff games, all the New York Six games, and of course, we'll have the National Football League Week 17. Before we get out of here, guys, I want to remind you to play the free Super Six game for Week 16. You can win your share of $10,000. You enter the free game, predict the correct answers of six questions for your chance to win weekly cash prizes. Go to the Fox Sports app and make your picks. All right, everyone, we'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Talk to you guys next week.